Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Miles Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me everywhere at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me puppy wrangling. I know. Welcome to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs vlogs. This, this, this podcast is for the eyes only. If you are listening to this on audio version, you're going to want to rush over to youtube.com slash CC Miles Podcast and see the video version of this week's episode. It is a puppy cast. Yes, it is. I'm going to put this puppy down, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to sit in this chair so you guys can enjoy video footage of the puppy from here on out, because as you can tell, she's like, put me down. Okay, you're down. You're free. <laughs> she's not I'm having it. <laughs> Maybe it's just an, it's an animal podcast today. Topo's over here curious on what's going on. This this guy's been a lot, a lot more into what I'm doing lately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But oh we goodness. don't care about that. Let's talk about your puppy. Let's talk about little Eleanor. She has, <laughs> she has 40 different names, 40 different ways to spell her name. <laughs> she does have 40 different... I love it. Somebody today spelled it. It was Eleanor, but it started with the L, and it looked like it looked like L -a nor And I, I thought it was the cutest. People were correcting, like and I'm like, you know, it, that's what it sounds like. I don't care how you spell it. I just used the letter L. I am I am the epitome of laziness to the core. So oh, it, I could get it all. I could get my point across with the one letter. It's just the one letter. It's just right, the one right. Letter. So how? I old... really thought. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, how old is she now? She is twelve and a half weeks old today. Oh, you new parents. Four, eight, twelve. So three months and change. Three months and change. Yes. Nice. Okay. Okay. How's it going so far? Uh, doing good. It's it, they're doing good. She's uh, she's coming out of her shell more and more each day, which is nice. Right. You know, they uh, I feel like she's she's learning the house. She's learning the other dogs. She's learning everything. I mean, she's got to. She's a puppy. She doesn't know what the heck she's doing. Yeah. So, like, everything is new. Right. Um, but she's doing good. Like comparatively to the day we brought her home and i was like uh she hates the other dogs and i don't know what i'm gonna do i think i pretty much blew up your messages and the group chat messages <laughs> right yep <laughs> what are we doing are we biting face good lord <laughs> yeah because she has to learn from you and jamie and then she also has to get another set of rules from kira and memphis on yes. how they roll so it's puppy school for her it's it's really interesting because she does, she'll play with Memphis. Memphis has uh, has played with her quite a few times, which, you know, you guys can see that in the vlogs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But she has a different play style with Memphis than she does with Kira already. Like, she's already learned that Memphis has a different style of play where Kira never caught on to that, which is why I think Memphis never really liked playing with her. Very rarely would Memphis play with her, even to this day. Very rarely does Memphis play with Kira. But Eleanor seems to switch up her play style for Memphis, which I hope she continues doing that because it's really cute to see when it's just Eleanor and Memphis together, the way they play versus the way uh, the way that Memphis and, or wait, the way that Kira and Eleanor play. It has been nice to see the footage. I don't want to call it I told you so footage, but I told you so footage to everybody watching of uh, <laughs> Memphis running around. Like she does play. She does do stuff. Yeah. She, she does. But it's nice to see she her does. running around. And she she does play. She does enjoy it. And a lot of times, like, people don't see it as much on the on the videos because when Memphis plays, sometimes it's like a five minute play session. And if I don't have my camera in my pocket, like or my phone on me, like I just enjoy Memphis playing for Memphis playing. So I feel like I feel like I miss out on putting that on the camera a lot, and it ends up being mostly, you know, you mostly see Kira playing. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes sense. But it was nice to see her running around, being happy again. Yes. At least two just. It's like it's brought it's brought that puppy out of her again, like that play out of her. But as you can tell, like even in this video here. You can see Memphis is laying over on the couch watching, mm. which she loves to watch dogs play. Like, she'll watch Kira and Lana play all the time. And then you've got two balls of fur that are literally just two balls of fur way down here in the corner. Because, you know, there's all this space over here where they could be in the center of the screen. But let's play right here in the corner. Yeah, it seems, <laughs> it seems like Elle's done uh, whining and crying. Uh-huh, yeah. There's still... That, oh, see, I don't know if you heard that. But <laughs> yeah, there yeah. are still some moments where she lets out that little yelp. And I, a lot of it has to do with, you know, <laughs> hey, you can't hold her down. Kira will try <laughs> to hold her down. But if you notice, like, she let out the little squeak, 
because she it was too much for her in that moment but she didn't run she goes right back for more she's right. like oh but she's still a puppy so she still has that's her defense mechanism is to let out those little squeaks yeah and you can see you can see how gentle Kira is actually playing with her because Kira could take her out I mean you guys have seen Lana and Kira play and and Indy and Kira play and they are they knock each other down they take each other out Kira is really being gentle with the puppy why 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 is that how come like if I'm walking my dog my hypothetical dog and then <laughs> the other dog's like rah 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 and like oh my gosh they're gonna fight well like how come these two aren't aren't brawling to the death um they've well one they're learning each other she know Kira knows she's a puppy like dogs know when they're puppies in this this will change you know over over the course of time it will change as Eleanor gets a little bit older mm-hmm. it'll it'll change they'll play they'll have different play rates Eleanor will start to test Kira more and more and more and things will change Memphis moved to the bed under the desk and look now now there's no puppy it's just Kira <laughs> she's just chilling <laughs> she's just chilling for a minute she's like oh I get a break thanks <laughs> well will I'll be bigger than Kira <laughs> back for more I so you know it's a really hard thing to judge uh, because you know Eleanor is all three of these dogs are all from responsible reputable breeders so they should all fall within the female standard size Eleanor has champion parents all the dogs have champion parents female huskies shouldn't be over 55 pounds Memphis is 58 pounds don't judge her she's nine years old she put on some COVID <laughs> weight she needs to lose three pounds <laughs> um, and Kira I weighed Kira the other day and she was 45 pounds and normally she's 42 so Kira again probably could, could use, lose a pound or two as well but it's winter time you know whatever uh but anyway the Eleanor's weight versus the other dog's weight at this same age Eleanor is bigger so there's a chance that as she gets older she could be on the top end of that weight I think she will be bigger than Kira if anything Kira's small for a husky like not small for a husky, but she's a smaller sized husky. Right. Yes. Right. Well, so like on the on the large scale, like who was the biggest dog? Was it Oakley? Because Oakley, when I remember seeing Oakley, Oakley was big. Oakley was the biggest. Oakley at her top weight was like 63 pounds. Mm-hmm. She was overweight at 63 pounds, and that was when we first got her. Her average weight after that was right around 58 pounds. So she was on average my biggest husky. And then it would have been Shelby after that. Shelby Shelby averaged 54 pounds pretty much from adulthood on. Like, she, her weight didn't really fluctuate. She, she never really got bigger or smaller in the wintertime. She just stayed at that 54-pound range pretty much. Um, Must be nice. And then Memphis, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then Memphis. Memphis ranged from 52 to 58. So she has, like, this five-pound range. Like, in the mm-hmm. summer, I'll be able to get her back down to 52 pounds without an issue. But then in the winter, she'll go back up to 58. Just It just seems to happen with her. It's happened ever since she got over seven years old. And then Kira ranges from 42 to forty two to 45 pounds. Okay, so is there a chance that Elle so could Kira's be the, the smallest. biggest, period? I She could be. I think she'll be as big as Memphis, at least. Mm-hmm. She'll I, definitely be bigger than Kira. Because when I see her running, when I'm editing the videos, like she's got like a big old like butt, like button, like leg. She does. It just looks wide and thick for her size. I'm like, oh, maybe she's gonna be good. But I'm no Doctor Doolittle, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how that works. She, she has very thick legs already. Where I don't know if you remember Kira as a puppy. Kira was like that, you know, legs for days as a puppy. She yes. had really long, skinny legs as a puppy. Memphis had a little bit thicker legs and a little bit bigger feet as a puppy. Even now, Memphis's feet are bigger than Kira's feet. Uh, Kira has tiny little feet, so it, it's hard to judge because you know they got to grow into everything. But looking at like the paperwork, like when I took Eleanor to the vet. I asked him, I'm like, well, how big was Kira at, you know, 10 weeks old or what? Yeah, it was 10 weeks old. And Kira was 14.2 pounds at 10 weeks old. And Eleanor at 10 weeks old was 16.2 pounds. So at 10 weeks old, she was already two pounds bigger than Kira. That's quite, that's quite a bit, to be honest. 
that's a difference for a pup. And she's been growing like a pound a week. I weighed her. She turned 12 weeks old on Saturday, and I weighed her. At 12 weeks old, she was 18.1 pounds. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, even even now looking at her, she right now, she looks bit, She looks way bigger. Yeah, she's, <laughs> That's for sure. She's big. I mean, you'll see her in a couple of weeks, but uh, she'll, uh, she'll, she'll be pretty big by the time you get here even. Yes, yes. Which I'll be there at the end of March. At, at the, the end, end of March, of March yeah. At I guess we March. could make sure to let everybody here know in case mm-hmm. in case they haven't heard yet. Oh uh, yes, but, please. Uh, we will be at the the we will be at the West Michigan Pet Expo. All the dogs will be there, including Dan. Oh wait, Dan's not a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I speak a little all the bit dogs, of dog. Right. All the dogs will be there. Eleanor will make appearances. It'll be interesting to see how she does. We don't want to let her get too overstimulated or overwhelmed so the plan will be she probably won't be there the entire time she will probably come in and do like 15 or 20 minute sessions and then go take breaks that's what that, jamie and i were kind of talking about sense. and that it all sense. depends it it all depends on how she acts you know if, if she right. if she's having a good time then then she can stay if she gets a little bit overwhelmed then then she can go sit with jamie for a bit I don't, like, she should get over, she's a puppy, like, at some point she's going to be like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, so. Well, she did the Ice Fest with us this past weekend. She came to the Ice Fest, and we were there for an hour and a half, and she was out there with us with people. Now, Jamie held her for a lot of it, like, he would pick her up and hold her whenever you could tell she was like, I I need a moment, and he got in the Jeep with her a few times just to kind of let her... You, you, to calm down a little bit when she was a little bit overstimulated, but she did really good. So, like, little kids were petting her. She was she was excited to see people. She was walking up to people on her mm. own. So, for her first micro experience with a lot of people, she did really really good. Yeah, let's 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 talk about that. Go go see us. Go see us. Uh, details are on um, gone to the Snow Dogs Podians page. And where else can we find <gasps> Excuse details? Excuse me, ma'am. That's not yours. Hey. Oh, that looks Ma'am. like that's hers now. That's not yours. She's like, I let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find the event info on the Gone to the Snow Dogs Facebook page. If you go to Gone to the Snow Dogs on Facebook and look at the events, all the event info is there. Oh, you little brat. You're going to have to go parent. That's not yours. Yeah. She's uh, like, I could just chew this up. That's that's hers. That's <laughs> hers now. So let's talk about this ice fest real quick because I saw some photos from this ice fest and there was people cuddle puddling with your dogs, and I didn't think it was like a meet and greet thing. I thought it was something that you were doing on your own, like on your own. So we got so Alpina used to have this ice fest many many years ago. It was at Michikiwas Park, and they used to have like this toboggan slide, and they would have an ice fest queen, and they would have all of these winter activities, and they would host it at this park, and it was really really cool. And throughout the years, I think in the seventies, maybe early eighties, they kind of just stopped doing it. People lost interest. Times change. You know, blah 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 blah. Right. So a few years ago, there was a group that tried to bring it back. But it was an indoor thing, and it just wasn't quite the same. This year, the Thunder Bay Arts Council, along with downtown Alpena and a bunch of other groups, decided to bring it back again. But they wanted, like, ice sculptures and all of these things. So they reached out to us, and they asked us if we would be really willing to bring the dogs and the dog sled down for, like, at least an hour and talk to people. Uh, they wanted us to do, like, demonstrations, but we didn't really have enough snow. Next year, I already talked to them and told them we would love to participate again next year. And next Uh year, what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a chute. So we'll take snow fencing and we'll build like a snow chute and make sure that we can pile enough snow in this like 150 foot chute or whatever. And we can run the dogs back and forth in there. That way, they're also not distracted by the people and the horses and everything else. So they'll be able to run back and forth and show people what they can do. Um, you you there's know, there's puppy. there's horses there like in the winter time they don't they're not like put away in the garage like yep. sports cars until the summer. Nope they they had horses there and they had uh, like horse drawn buggies horse drawn buggies yeah I guess that's what it is yeah and people were able to ride on the ride on the the carriage and they kind of went around the area and then they had like all of these different would you you can insert some photos I'll send you some photos okay uh, they had all these different ice sculptures at the event uh, you could pay a couple hundred dollars. The way it worked was, like, it was sponsored by all of the local businesses. They went around and they said, hey, to make this work, we need people to buy these ice sculptures so we can have them. 
but we don't really have like a ton of funding to do this. So a bunch of local businesses in town got together and they each paid for their own ice sculpture that got to sit out in front of their business. So there was like all this event that happened down at the park. But then if you went to downtown Alpena, there was more ice sculptures and you could walk around in front of the businesses and like Boland's Jewelry had a big ring. Um, Myers Fashions, which is a fashion store, had like a big ice purse. It was really cool. Like we haven't had something like this in here here in a very long time, so it was it was actually really cool. That's kind of that's kind of cool in California here since it's always hot. Uh, the only thing that I have for an ice sculpture is sometimes I open the freezer and like three or four ice cubes will be stuck together, and I'll be like, "Whoa, that's kind of cool!" And then I'll put it in my <laughs> cup that it don't fit in and stuff. That's the closest thing we have to to ice sculptures out here. That's cool. I didn't know that you were invited like that. I thought you were just going to like, "Oh, this is happening," and I'm just gonna go. I didn't know like they wanted you to be on yeah no they wanted us to be there uh they they know who we are they wanted us to be there so we you know we promoted it about two weeks before the actual event that we were going to be there and we had some people that drove from out of town and came to meet the dogs and came to the ice fest and it was it was a lot of fun we really enjoyed it oh that's good good yeah i didn't, I didn't realize that i did, did did people come out there just to see you uh, yeah, we had quite a few people that came out to just to see us, and then they stuck around and, and did everything else. I got to get this puppy out from under my chair. Good, good, <laughs> good, good luck with that. Well, that's cool. That's fantastic. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you got to go out and, and do that. So that was that was Eleanor's officially official first event. No, we'll call it like ep- it was her episode zero, her trial run, her trial run. Technically, yeah. Yeah, it was the first time she was around a bunch of people. It was the first time she was, you know, kind of out in in the wild. Right. But she did really good. She actually, she did really, really good. Look. I don't know if you saw that, but she is now big enough to jump up on that couch all by herself. Right. Are you, did you have to baby-proof the house, like, or puppy-proof the house any more than you usually do now? Like, is there a new set of rules? Because you're already back into another routine of, like, you just have to fence off the, you just have to fence off the Christmas tree. The dogs aren't going to hop up on the top and get all your <laughs> mantle stuff. What are the new, like, what's the new stuff that you have to do that you're like, oh, back to this again? Um, We try to make sure that, you know, nothing really gets left out. Basically, she's kind of being room-trained like Kira was, like, We're not really putting her in the crate. She doesn't seem to mind her crate. Like, Kira hated her crate, which is why we we room-trained Kira. Mm -hmm. Eleanor doesn't seem to mind her crate, but the past few times I've tried to leave and the other dogs are laying on the couch, she wants to be with them. So, you know, Jamie will come upstairs, let her out of her crate. First, he makes her stop crying. Then she has to hold the position of not crying and screaming because you don't want her to think that when she's crying and screaming, she's going to get let out. So right. he'll come upstairs, he'll calm her down, and then he'll sit in the living room for a little bit. And then he goes and lets her out of her crate. And she'll run right over to the other dogs and lay down with them and go to sleep. So we're trying to make sure that nothing is left out in the living room, you know, so she doesn't have any anything besides toys to really chew on. Uh, we, we This is really silly. We have that big beanbag chair in our living room. Uh, and I was yes. so afraid... I was so afraid that she was going to pee on it. Because it, puppies don't really have full control over their bladder and over all of that until they're, like, 16 weeks old. Like, if they have to pee, there's... Most of the time, there's a little bit of warning if you're watching. But sometimes that little bit of warning is, I got to go right now. And yeah, they just pee. I'm the same so, way. I get it. Totally get it. <laughs> I mean, it happens. You know, it happens. Right. So... Of course, she jumped up on that beanbag chair to look out at the window, and she turned around, and she peed on the beanbag chair. And I told Jamie, I'm like, oh, my God. So we cleaned it. Like, thankfully, we were right there. We cleaned it all up real quick. And I said, well, you know, this is a beanbag chair. Like, how do we protect this? So no joke, we bought a king-size waterproof mattress cover, like that you use for little kids when they're being potty trained as well. Yeah. Uh, And we opened up the beanbag chair and we covered it with this waterproof mattress cover so that if it happens again we don't have to you know because we took out foam pieces just to make sure we like sprayed everything with the enzyme killer because we're like oh we don't you know we got to make sure to clean this um but now we don't have to freak out as much if it happens again it's like vinyl right <laughs> and of it's... course yep it's like vinyl it's a little bit crunchy so the beanbag itself is like a little bit crunchier and uh Jamie had to shift the vents around in the beanbag chair, and he had to unzip the cover just a little bit to let the air out. And we won't leave it on there forever, of course. But uh, right. it's uh, it's definitely been it's been interesting. It's been a little bit a little bit different. It's a little crunchy for the dogs right now, but they don't seem to mind. And like I said, you know, in a year or so, we'll take it off. We probably won't have to worry about it as much anymore. But 
We just wanted it to be protected. <laughs> I love that beanbag chair. I can't that imagine your house without it now. Right? I know. We I, we said the same thing. We're like, what if we move? No, we can't. Well, what if we... No, no. It's got to... And then, you know, that's like Kira's favorite place to be. I'm like, yeah, we can't move it. It's got to... It's just got to stay. We'll just figure it out. The other thing we did is, you know, we have baby gates, again, because like, you know, Kira is room trained. So we have the, the baby gate that goes between the living room and the kitchen and then we have another one that goes like in the hallway area and jamie and i were so sick and tired of stepping over the baby gate that i find i bought one with a door in it so now we just have a baby gate that has a little like the one in the basement for game night that we use for the dog to stay in the room yes yes so we bought one of those a baby gate with a door in it so we don't have to step over the stupid gate anymore i don't (laughs) get how they none of your dogs ever and i don't know if l will figure it out finally why are they not just jumping the gate they watch the humans step over the gate why are they not jumping the gate you jump that high when you get your food i know i I don't get it eleanor has eleanor has figured out when the gate is unlocked that she can actually pop it open Right, like, so she's learned how to use little... the gate. <laughs> yep, yep. But not she's learned when it's unlocked, she can just push the door open and walk right through it. But if it's locked, she can't do that. But she'll stand up on it, which the other dogs never really did. So there is a chance that I may have to get the 36-inch the tall gate to stop her from doing that eventually. But I'm hoping not. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping she settles. And she is... Uh, very memphis like when it comes to oh my god where did you go if i leave the room and i mean this is a typical puppy thing as well but if i leave the room Mm -hmm. she's like where did you go where did you and then she starts crying so i've been trying to purposely walk out of rooms and like hide in other areas of the house (laughs) she's like like, what the heck are you doing (laughs) (laughs) but i have to because she has to learn to be okay with me not being in the room with her. Right. So right. we've slowly been working on that. And like, and I, I leave almost once a day, every day for at least an hour, mm-hmm. I leave the house and Jamie is, is either in the kitchen or he's in the basement watching them on the camera just so she can understand that it's okay that I'm gone and I will come back because otherwise, you know, they develop separation anxiety and blah, 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 blah. And actually the video I did today, I, uh, I was talking about the importance of taking each of the dogs individually to do things because like you know we missed out on a lot of that with Kira because Shelby was so sick and we were trying to take care of Shelby and then we had this puppy and you know we didn't know Shelby was sick when we got the puppy or how bad it was going to get when we got Kira as a puppy Mm -hmm. so things with Shelby started going downhill so fast I missed out on a lot with Kira when it came to making sure to take her places and know that, you know, okay, we can take you and you'll be fine. Or we can take Memphis away and you'll be fine. But I think there was something in Kira that when Shelby left and never came back, now when I take Memphis away, and you've seen the videos, Kira goes absolutely crazy. Right. She can't stand it. Jamie and I can leave, but when we take Memphis away, Kira can't handle it. So I'm trying to also work with Kira for her to understand that when we take Eleanor away, she's going to come back. So hopefully she doesn't have the same reaction every single time we take the puppy somewhere it's so interesting to see that's how dialed you are with your dogs and stuff like that like growing up we just had like a pet dog like we i we wouldn't have been able to identify any of that stuff that makes sense i mean that makes perfect sense i saw the video from today and she was howling and crying like that makes sense hey where are you going like are you coming back what's the deal so i i get that that makes that makes sense because the dogs are a lot smarter animals are a lot smarter than i think we domesticatedly they, give them credit for. They are. And, you know, this, I talk about this a lot with people. Huskies are, you know, and I don't want to say, oh, Huskies are the best breed, blah, 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 blah. And that's not what I'm saying. Siberian Huskies, northern breeds in general are different. Every breed of dog is different. Every breed of dog has to be worked with in a different way. And Siberian Huskies are very social and very much a pack type of animal they need a buddy they need a friend they they really like to be around other huskies they like to be around you know they want to be together so when you take one away they 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 feel that they're like wait why how come i didn't get you're taking my friend i'm supposed (laughs) to be going because we have to stay together all the time like we're a team this is what we do so it 
because some dogs have no reaction. Some dogs, you're just like, oh, I have three dogs and I can take my one dog and nobody else cares. Or you may have three dogs that never in one house that never interact with each other ever. Yeah. And, and it yeah, happens. Sort of. Like, sort it just of. happens. Yeah. But the, the dogs, know, the dogs are like fast and the a... furious. They're like, it's family, man. Yeah. It's family. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. They kind of, they all learn their places and they all learn, like, you know, even with when feeding them. Memphis gets fed first, then Kira, then Eleanor. When getting treats, Memphis is first, then Kira, then Eleanor. You have to really keep the... It, basically, it's a hierarchy. You have to keep... The puppy has to know that they're not first. You know, she's not right. first. Because right. the minute she thinks she's first, then it becomes, well, maybe I can take something from you. Maybe I could take your food from you. Or maybe I could take your toy from you. So you kind of just want to watch the interactions with them and constantly be reinforcing and reminding them that hey this is the pecking order you're not the boss i'm the boss <laughs> well okay kira's the boss don't tell her but. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that you pay attention that's good that you have like a pecking a pecking order is that yeah, what it's called? yeah pretty much your mom taught me yeah, what that was much. when i was feeding the chickens at her house she's yes. like watch look at the pecking order i'm like oh my gosh like the same it's like the same <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I, I I agree. I, I watch you feed one and the other than the other. So she's going to yeah. probably just be a hybrid between both of them because she's going to learn the ways of Memphis and Kira. Yes. Yeah, she she definitely is. And like her her entire um, her whole temperament is already very, very similar to Memphis as a puppy. Like she's very snuggly. She's very... I wish I would have caught it on camera last night. It was so funny. I went to bed before Jamie. He was downstairs mm -hmm. working on... He's rewiring my dollhouse, which I should probably vlog that. But he's rewiring my dollhouse. Um, and uh, I went to bed before him, and it was like an hour later. He came upstairs, and Kira... Or Kira Eleanor woke up, ears straight up, out of a dead sleep because she heard something. And at first it was like a panic of, oh my God, something's going to kill me and it's going to eat me. And then Jamie walked into the room and she was the happiest dog ever. Aww. Which is like, that's what Memphis does when she sees people. She's like, oh my God, you're here and, you, and I love you. Oh my gosh. She jumped over all the other dogs, jumped right to him and he picked her up and held her. And she was just wiggly and flat eared and like, this is the greatest moment of my life. I'm like, you are identical to Memphis as a puppy. But at the same time, you know, she's already developing attitude like Kira so I do I think she's going to learn a lot of traits from both of them and hopefully always come to me when I call her because right now every time I call her to come inside she comes running unlike Kira who doesn't well that's because right now <laughs> and when I see in the videos she comes running up to you like oh, everything's the best what are we doing next and stuff I bet she'll figure it out she'll figure it out and be like oh yeah. like I it's yeah. not always the greatest thing after this and I'm just going to stay out there right, and, right. and hide apples and stuff like that you don't have snow now though right it's just ugh. We have snow. It's raining right now, but we do have snow right now. Um, it's supposed to be, it's 44 degrees right now. It's supposed to get all, all the way up to 47 today. And then uh, in the middle of the night, it's supposed to drop. So everything will freeze and maybe we'll be able to ice skate in the backyard. Oh, that would be fantastic. That would be, I would love to see a little, <laughs> I would love to see a little video of Jamie ice skating in the backyard. That would be, that would be great. Um, I do have a it, confession. It might happen. I have a confession to make. So oh, no. before you, before you picked up Eleanor, uh, you know, I, and everybody knows you've been kind of eyeing a puppy for a, a while, a while. And right. e every now and then you'll send us pictures of like, oh, look, like these three are available. Or this one's available or that one's available. And then you're like, look, this one's available. And it was Eleanor. Like, you know, like maybe maybe this one's the one we're going to get. And like wasn't stoked on the color because I'm I have like very specific visual visions of what I think a husky is and they all on because I've only seen them on TV until you know now they're everywhere in my town like there's everybody's at a husky in my town but they all are like white and gray or or white and gray or white and gray so you like showed me <laughs> you showed me this puppy that looked dirty I'm like well why is it it's dirty and it's like it wasn't like it wasn't as pretty to me as all the other dogs and stuff like that. But like Steve went nuts. He's like, "Oh my gosh! Like this is beautiful." So like, what what am I what am I missing? Because right now she looks cute. I mean, she's pretty, and 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 I think she's gonna change colors. But I'm sorry. In the beginning, I'm Sheesh. like, "Oh no!" I was hoping you'd get like 
I was hoping you'd get like a like a Shiloh, like with just whoop and like the eyes and just. <laughs> well, that's kind of what Kira looks like. Kind of, yeah. She's so her her coat is called a goody, a goody, a goudy, a goody, however you want to say it. Um, she should actually lighten a little bit. I'm gonna try to move the camera so you can. But see. But this agouti colored isn't specific to huskies. That's just a, the like a color of like dogs. Yep. Yeah, it's a coat color that huskies can come in. It's not a very, so it's not a very common. It's not rare. You know, you'll have right. people that'll be like, "Oh, it's a rare color." It's not really rare. It's pretty. It's just not something everybody sees. Um, but it's a it's a more common color that goes historically goes back to a lot of the huskies from many, many, many years ago. Like when they first started breeding huskies, that coat color was a lot more common. Oh, uh, okay. I have not seen now. that before you showed me pictures. And right. I was like, well, okay, that's fine. I mean, and hold on. Let me, let, me, let me wrap up this story before everybody hates on me. I, it's adorable. I love watching the videos. I love, I, I love her. I've, it's grown on me a, a lot. But in the very beginning, I'm like, no, that's not a husky that I've seen on. That's not a, a balto. Or like, that's not, that's not what I'm used to. Not what I'm used to seeing. Did you want... Was your was was that color in mind for your next for your next dog? Okay, so to answer your question, was I was this a coat color that was ever really on my mind? Yes. Um, I have always loved this coat color. I it, there's something about it. It's just it's unique. It's different. So my my top coat color of a husky that I've always wanted. I've always wanted a red husky. Like ever since we got our first husky, I've always wanted a red and white husky. I don't know why. I just think they're really, really pretty. It's one of my favorite colors, like that red color or that copper color, which Shelby was a sable, but she had a lot of red red tinge to her, which mm -hmm. I thought was really cool. Yeah, I do like so that she, color. Shelby well. had a really, yeah, and Shelby had a really unique coat color. Like it was, it was different. It was, it was unique. Um, and I, I always loved that coloring. Like I, I always loved, but I never ever thought. In a million years, we would get one that color because, like I said, again, it's not that they're rare, but a lot of reputable breeders don't seem to breed as much for that color. But I've seen more recently they have been. You know, they're trying to get more of those colors. I just never thought it would be something because a lot of my responsible breeder friends that I that I know and I've known for a really long time that have dogs. You see a lot of like the grays and whites and the blacks and whites yeah. and you know the the light reds of and mainstream. things like that. That's what I see more of, and and you know that because you know I've sent you pictures for the past year going, oh look, this puppy's available and this puppy's available and this puppy's available, and it's all been none of them have really been the color that she is. Correct. Right. So her her litter, they had two that no, one that looked like her, two that were like more full black and white and then a light colored one which i will remind me and i'll send you photos so you can kind of put the the litter photos in here okay um but yeah so did i want one of course i wanted one i want one of every color husky like if i could have <laughs> 20 huskies right now and handle them i would i know i can't right but i you know i'm not gonna say that i wouldn't want that but i've always loved this coat color i just never put it in my mind that we were going to get one that color. It just wasn't wasn't really on my radar for, oh, one of these days we'll get one that color. And then we did, which actually the full story, I wanted to do it before we podcasted, but you know, the full story of Eleanor, like how we got her, how everything came to be, blah, 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 blah. That's actually going to go up on Saturday on Gone to the Snow Dog. So I'll answer like even more questions. Yeah, later. yeah. Like, we, can, we can wait for the, we won't ask those questions here. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, the I, I had no idea. And then when the opportunity ar arose, I'm like, I mean, I, I how do how do I say no? Which I could have said no. I've said no to multiple different dogs over the years, and you know, it, mo like multiple different colors and things like that. But I, look at her; she's got two different color eyes. Like. <sighs> Jamie really wanted another blue-eyed girl. That was kind of his thing. He's like, I want me, another blue-eyed girl. Me, I want me too. Blue dog. Me too. You had a you had one you sent me a picture of, and it, and the the puppy was gray and had the prettiest blue eyes. And I'm like, I love this dog so much. It just had those <laughs> yeah had those blue eye blue eyes. So I get it, Jamie. Yeah, he you know he wanted another blue-eyed girl. I was I could have cared less. Like for me, it was like. 
we've had three blue-eyed dogs, and you know, now we have the brown-eyed dogs. I don't think I notice it as much as other people notice it. Like, I don't think when I look at them, I don't see that as much as other people. Um, and it's probably because I see them. Yes, well, that's every because day. we're on the other. On daily yeah, we're on the other end of the camera. Yeah, yeah. we're on the other end there, so we exactly. only have visuals to judge by. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I'll fully admit, when we when we sat down and made our pros and cons list for her, like, we made a pros and cons list. Are we ready to do this? Because we had less than a week. Like, she was going to beat from the day we fast. found out we were getting her. <laughs> it happened so fast. Happened so, fast. you know, we made a pros and cons list. <laughs> and full, full disclosure here, one of the pros for this puppy was she was uniquely colored. Like, that was a big pro for me. Like, she's different. She's not what everybody sees... And the other thing is, is, you know, I do a lot with trying to educate people on the breed and trying to educate people on, you know, Siberian Huskies and blah, 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 blah. So I feel like she gives me another opportunity to, you know, she's not a wolf. My Facebook page, are you sure she's not a wolf? Are you sure she's not an Akita? Are you sure she's not a German Shepherd? It's been really fun, believe it or not, to actually like talk to people about that and be like, oh, no, she's she's not a wolf. She's, you know, this is what she... This is what she is. This is blah, blah, blah. So that's been kind of fun, and which I haven't been able to do in a while. So I don't know. I get to, like, educate people on the fact that she is a purebred Siberian Husky, and she's not a mix, and she's not, and they can look like this. And then people want to know if she's blind because she has two different color eyes. So the the ability to be able to educate more people about just because she has two different color eyes doesn't mean she's blind has been, I don't know, fun for me. <laughs> yeah, so I have all those weird questions, what questions too. So, like... In the comments, like on the Podians group and stuff like that, a lot of people have the same color dog. And throughout the years of their lives, they completely look different from all the photos. Someone will post like four photos of like, love like you know, one year, five year, 10 year, whatever, 100 years. And yes. like, they all look com- like completely different dog. So there is a chance that she could change like a bunch, right? She probably will. She'll probably be a lot lighter as she gets older. Like her face... It could go either way. She could get darker or she could get lighter. And it's hard to really say. Her her mom got lighter over time. But that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody else in her genetic background didn't get darker over time. But I have a feeling like she kind of has the rings around her eyes, the really light color rings around her uh-huh. eyes right now. I have a feeling those will probably get a little bit bigger. Like she'll, she'll lighten up on her face a little bit. Um, I've been told, and I don't know how true it is, that they go through a blonde phase like you you know she's sitting back here you can't really see it but the back of her ears are really really blonde and like the back of her head like it goes down into the to the grays and stuff but she has a lot of like blonde and brown tinges in the back of her ears and I've been told as they age that the blonde will become really prominent and then they'll go back to dark so she'll change a lot between the time between now and and I plan on doing like I did this really fun video with Kira for her birthday when she turned a year old and it was like my husky puppy from you know eight weeks to one year six weeks to one year because I had pictures of her as a puppy whatever it was and I put all these pictures together so you could really see the change in her over time and I plan on doing it I mean it's a year away but I plan on doing it with her as well to really show the difference between when you know when she was born versus a year from now and then I hope to do another one after that so it'll be like, oh, here's from when she was born to two years, just to show the difference in how much they actually do change. Right. It would be really cool. It probably would be hard to remember every day. Of, you know, the people that sit there and they take a photo of themselves every single day oh, yeah, for, no, I ain't doing for that. years. They can just watch your group. <laughs> I don't like that either. That's one of the things, that's one of the bad side effects I dislike about all the content we've created over the last decade is when I go back and watch an old video and see how young I look, I'm like... This isn't cool, man. So I would like, I would (laughs) melt into goo if I watch one of those pictures of me taking pictures of myself every day for years. Also, even more impressive than that is the people that can remember every day to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just take, I just take like pictures that I took throughout the year and then footage that I took. And some of it is like footage that I never shared anywhere. Cause you know, we have tons of footage that just never gets posted. So like yes. when I did Kira's, I had footage of her that had never been shared anywhere publicly. And I'm like, oh, I'll throw this in there. So it was like never before seen put footage of my Husky puppy, whatever I titled the video. And then it just was kind of Kira as she grew up. And I thought it was really fun. A lot of people have asked me to do that again with the other dogs. And I think... I don't know if I have enough 
video footage, but I could probably do it for... Sh I know I could do it for Memphis, but I could probably do it for Shelby in photo form from, like, when we got her to, you know, when she got a little bit older. Because Shelby was, what, two years old? Two years old when we started our YouTube? She was born in 2007, so she was two years old when we started doing YouTube. So I don't have a ton of video footage of her mm -hmm. when she was younger, but I do have some, and I thought about doing it, like, on her on her birthday, what would have been her birthday coming out and doing that video so people could see because Shelby was like Shelby was tan she didn't have any of that dark black coloring down her back she was like tan and white and that was it she had she very was. little coloring to her at all when she was a puppy uh, photos might be a little bit easier to do we have like videos and videos and video like it would be like going to a library and trying to find some of this stuff out you have a better organization skills than I do but to go through all that <laughs> yeah. do you, footage. Do you want me to turn the camera around and show everybody my desk? <laughs> right. But in digital form, you like label your folders right. and stuff. You don't have 40 new folder twos and new folder threes. I have so much stuff everywhere when my brain decided to name it one thing and then it was really another thing and stuff like that. So going back through old footage might not be the easiest thing to, to do. So. Right, where mine is all organized by the year and the yeah, month. See, so you might have an so easier like, time doing that then. Yeah, I can go back. And it's year and month is how I organize everything. All my photos from, you know, 2002 January are all in one folder. 2002 February are all in one folder. And that's pretty much how I've done it. 2002 was when I got my first digital camera. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Mine, they were so bad. It was like an HP. It was like a <laughs> silver HP. And it would just eat. It I would had just a Sony. Eat the batteries. Did you have the Sony that took the actual 3.5 inch floppies on the side? Click, click. No, it had, it wasn't a 3.5 inch floppy, but it was a big, it was a big disc that went. And it was, you know, it was a Sony only. Like the card that went in there, you could only oh, buy that purple. Sony. That purple card, I have one. The yes, other day, I was yep. going through all my old cards, and I pulled out one of those purple Sony cards and just shook my head. Like I was so mad at Sony, and they were so dang expensive too for those stupid cards. Yes, they yes. were. I had one though that just took straight a floppy disk, and I loved it. And this was like in two thousand. I loved it because you could just do it. You could fill the card up. Oh my gosh, how many? You couldn't even get one photo on a floppy now, but you could get all the photos <laughs> on there, and it would just go straight in your computer. And I was like, this is, this yep. is great. Yep, one wouldn't even fit. One wouldn't even fit now. Are you are you gonna send Eleanor to like Puppy University and stuff like that? We, I mean, I'm going to go with her. She's not going to go by herself, but we start puppy classes on Saturday. And it's, I'm so excited. You know my friends, Mike and Ashley? Mm -hmm. Yes. You've met Mike and Ashley? Absolutely. They just got a puppy. Her name, her name is Reed and she's a yellow Labrador. Oh, and yes. I texted her right after I got Eleanor and I said, did you sign up Reed for puppy classes yet? And she said, no, I've been working, but I want to get her in. And I said, they still have openings. So I'm actually taking puppy classes with uh, Mike and Ashley and Reed. And I'm hoping to film quite a bit. I actually already talked to Ellie, the trainer that I'm working with, and she wants me to film while I'm there. She's like, I want you to make a video and talk about the importance of this. And I said, okay, I could do that. So hopefully I'll be able to get some good footage and film while we're doing puppy training as well. Is it the same trainer? Because I'm sure your town only has like one puppy school. It's so it's the trainer I used with Kira. The trainer I used with Shelby was different. I didn't actually take Memphis to a trainer. Memphis and I never did puppy classes. I should have, but we never did. Memphis and I did agility, but we never did puppy classes. I don't know why. I just think it just didn't, something just didn't work out when, when the time came for her to do it. Maybe they weren't offering it or maybe, I don't know, maybe we were traveling, but I didn't end up doing it with Memphis. But the trainer I worked with with Shelby actually retired. So mm -hmm. the trainer I'm going with this time is the same person that helped me train Kira, which we all know how that turned out. That's not her fault, though. <laughs> if, if, so, so since, like, you already know, you already know what it takes to train, like, the dogs and mm -hmm. stuff, what's the advantage of going to, like, puppy school, to, like, to do it instead of just doing it at your house in your backyard or something? So Eleanor already knows how to sit and look. We've already been working on commands. I can make her sit and look and wait. We've already been working on all that because like you said, I do know how to train a puppy. I've done it many times. But the benefit to going to puppy classes mm -hmm. is the little reminders. You know, you do forget over time because I don't do this on a daily basis. And the other thing is, is the socialization. It is so important to socialize them with other people, other dogs and other situations. 
And like right now, we're still having a little bit of issue with Eleanor where she's not like she's not like aggressive towards other dogs, but she's not sure about other dogs. So like even when I was in tractor supply, she saw a puppy, a two year old puppy that was on the ground and I had her in the cart. She was really interested in the puppy while it was on the ground. But when this woman picked this puppy up, Eleanor was like, nope, that's it. I'm out. And she would look the other way and she would just low rumble growl. And it's not an aggressive growl. It's a fear growl. So I need to help her get over that. And I, the puppy classes will really help with that because she'll be around other dogs the same age as her. Mm-hmm. So she'll start to get that socialization. Um, Eric brought Lana over the other day and we put Eleanor in a little pen so that she could see what was going on. But at the same time, Lana couldn't get to her. Lana couldn't be up in her face. And after about an hour, Eleanor was really interested in Lana. Like, she wanted to know, what are you doing? What do you What do you got? You got a toy? Well, how come I can't come play with your toy? Because I'm stuck in this pen. Like, she was really, but we didn't let them play because we wanted them to have a really positive experience the first time. Eric's coming over again Friday. We plan on doing the same thing. After a couple of weeks of this, then we'll let them play. But we want them to have that positive, like, experience we want it to be a good thing because if i let eleanor play with lana and lana knocks her over and scares the heck out of her well then every time lana comes over she's going to remember oh that dog scared me right so the puppy classes will help her every week be around other dogs once a week she'll go in there she'll be around other dogs you know her goal will be to focus on me not the other dogs but at the end of puppy class they always do a puppy playtime, and you can choose to let your dog interact with the other puppies so hopefully she'll get to a point where she'll want to interact with the other puppies. This is the first husky I've had out of the six I've had that isn't sure about other dogs just yet. Which, I'm not super worried about it. She'll figure it out. Like I said, the fact that, like, even it took her about an hour to warm up to Lana, I know she'll get it. It, Everything is just still really new to her. She's only 12 and a half weeks old. She doesn't know, she doesn't know half the things that happen in the world. Right, right. But that is something that you can kind of fix. It's not just... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a confidence-building thing. Um, Like I said, because it's not an aggressive... Aggression in puppies is a lot harder to work with. Fear in puppies is much easier to work with. Because, of course, they're scared. They've never... They don't know you. They've never done this before. I mean, even, like... Uh, my one friend, my one friend Dan, when he came over, Eleanor wanted nothing to do with him. She ran, and but he had big, clumpy boots. He's a big guy. He's a loud guy. And she just was scared. When Eric came over, Eric came over and did exactly what he was supposed to do. He came over. He completely ignored her. He petted the other two dogs. And Eleanor was, like, in and out going, wait a minute. Wait, what's going on? After five minutes, she was in his lap. She was like, oh, you're nice. I'm totally coming to see you. And then when Greg came over, which was the same day, Greg showed up just a little bit later, Mm -hmm. she instantaneously went to Greg. Because she, okay, somebody comes in this door, they're friendly. So she instantaneously went to him. My parents came over. She went to them with, you know, like nothing. Okay, cool. I'll I'll come see you guys. This is great. So it's just that repetitive, repetitive, it's building her confidence. Yeah, she's got to collect data. you got to understand that this isn't scary. Exactly. Uh, After she collects enough data, she'll be like, oh, this is cool and stuff like that. Okay. I get it. Sorry, Topo's over here trying to bring down the set uh, (laughs) because he's in the house. He's in the house board. But cats are bored here. Cats are bored here, Jess. I don't know what to do for them. They're done with yeah. my antics. They've heard you all my jokes. You need a cat wheel. I, you need a cat wheel. You know, Brittany was going to send me one. You can see, I don't know where I'm going to put a dang cat wheel. I have like, I have, it's like Monopoly in the house. There's like houses and there's hotels <laughs> in here and stuff. I don't know. You know, I kind of do want, those cat wheels are like $300. But, you yeah, know, I do have a spot in front of the fireplace over there. Maybe I'll ask Brittany to see. She was trying to get rid of her cat wheel because this guy is just all over the all over the place doesn't want anything from me it. anymore but he's got too much attention or too much attention too much like um like right. energy built up into him you know i play with them and stuff but after a while he's done with me so i don't know crystal's got crystal has kitten fever the same way like you have puppy fever and just and then she's like and then just getting a new dog doesn't help and she's got like kitten fever because she thinks that's going to help topo and stuff like that but i gotta raise the kid I'm the one that's home all day. <laughs> I got you. So and I, I mean, don't know. Is you know is it gonna help Topo because you had a kitten for a little bit and he wasn't very nice to the kitten. No, he <laughs> was just playing a little hard in the beginning and stuff like that. Kind of you just tell him like, yeah, but that's stop. how Kira was. But that's how yeah, right, right. But uh, he, he was he was learning to dial it down by the end. Uh, so that wasn't too too bad. I don't know. Right now, 
oh I hate to move this right now he's looking at the other outside cat that's out there just like I want to play I want to play and all his siblings are out there they all look like him from different litters right. and stuff like that and they all have that same spot on his nose and stuff so I know he sees other relatives that are out there running around and stuff like that because that's where he came from you know he came from outside to live the good life right. and so he wants something so maybe one of those wheels will run around or a kitten they just kind of sh- show up it's not as calculated as as you just they just right they just <laughs> kind of they just kind of show up well chris will come in with that the you don't want to get on, on a website face. and buy a buy a purebred cat be like oh look at this really cool siberian forest cat if i ever get cats that's what i'm getting I you know there's a couple cats that look cool. There's there's the one cat that is a Maine Coon that's all huge that looks cool. Yep. Then there's those one cats that are like they're like half Velociraptor and they like eat chicken <laughs> raw and they're like a little bit bigger and then they're always running around with all that energy that looks cool. No naked cats those creep me out so much. Those creep right. me out. I love all cats. Those creep me out. I would not. I would I would try to like tar and feather the cat i don't know i I don't like it naked um but uh i do uh i do love a siamese cat i've only seen one in my life yes ever and there's one that's running around this neighborhood i would love a uh, siamese cat is that what you call them yeah they're really cool yeah my my friend's parents had multiple siamese cats like that was their that was their cat breed that they that they had for a long time and they were they were amazing cats. Yeah, they look very cool. cool. But no, I get like the riff raff of like just like oh or the one cat that's like super scroll. It's all the cats in one. Where it's got the red patch and the gray patch and the black patch and stuff, and they look like right? all the cats in one. That I I would love one. I would love one of uh, one of those. But we don't get to choose. Right. They just it, the cats choose 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 us. So <laughs> I mean, technically, I didn't get to pick any of the last three of my puppies. The well, breeders picked which ones we were getting every right, time. So. Right. Well, I'm I'm happy for you, Jess. You seem okay. Although. You're up a lot. The text messages come a lot earlier now because you're, you're up a lot earlier. And I don't yeah. hear much from you during the day because you have a newborn. Like you're running around doing newborn yeah. stuff. You seem a lot happier. You do seem a lot happier. It's it's really interesting. You know, and Jamie and I were talking about this the other day. It's interesting how all of a sudden it went from, you know, we, it was two dogs and we were fine. We were fine. But we weren't. Like we thought we were but we weren't and it's really interesting how having the third dog again just makes everything feel like it's supposed to which is really weird right but we're a three dog household like we that we should have somebody just rang my doorbell um we're we're a three dog household i should go see who that go is. see her real quick just open the door hey back up and i'll just open the hi oh my god i was gone and now i'm back oh my god did you miss me <laughs> I missed you too. That was crazy. Enjoy picking her up because you won't be able to do that forever. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, crisis averted. Nobody was really there. Good. Well, and so you were talking about uh, you were talking about uh, being a three dog household. Yeah, it's it's just really interesting how I don't know. It just feels right again. Like it, it just feels right. It's so weird. It's so weird how. You know, there was a void and we knew there was a void, but I don't think we really knew how much of a void there was just having the two dogs. And not to say that, you know, oh, we don't we don't love the other two dogs. It's not what I'm saying at all. We just had been a three dog household for so long. You know, and even between when we lost Oakley to when we got Kira was not that long. So right. there wasn't as big of a span. Like this was a big span, but I also didn't want I didn't want to get a puppy you know, really close after Shelby passed away because, I mean, Kira, Kira's still a puppy. Kira, Kira will be three years old in a month. Um, wow. wow. So Kira still needed to have puppy time and do puppy things and things like that. So, you know, we wanted to wait. I almost wanted to wait one more year, but if we would have waited another year, Memphis would have been 10, Kira would have been four. By the time Eleanor would be able to pull a sled, that's a big gap. This will be eleven. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a that's a big yeah. gap. That's a big gap. I also think maybe from what I see too is like this kind of writes the ship a little bit. Like you got Kira, yes. and then you know Shelby had her issues, 
And I think a lot of the stuff that's coming out now, a lot of the excitement, a lot of the of the new puppy videos, and a lot of the new stuff was was lost due to like grieving and 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 lear- you know learning how yes. to like carry on when you have Kira there. It just oh. you know you wanted to put down those toys and you just didn't want to play with them anymore. And I feel like oh, it's it's it's, it's so now. true. It's I was only I still even when we got Kira, I was only uploading one video a week mm-hmm. because that was all I could that's all I could do. Like it was, you know, because Shelby was so sick and we were going through so much. And then when we lost Shelby, I mean, you know, I was ready to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like and every day, hard. like, like so, every day. Yeah. Yeah. So it was still, you know, it was one video a week. Well, right after we got Eleanor, I feel like I'm filming so much and I have all these ideas of like, I have lists written down of things that I want to do and things that I want to film and things I want to show people. I'm like, I can do two videos a week again because I, feel good enough to to do two videos a week again. I want to share these experiences. And like even, you know, I have my accountability group call that I talk to some creator friends of mine every single Tuesday night. And even last night I told them, I'm like, I am back to the point where I'm making videos because I like doing it, not because I want to make what's going to work. You know, I want to make the videos that I want to make because I enjoy it, not because this is what the algorithm wants me to do. Right. You know. And it helps too that so, you've, like, you've grieved, you've healed, and then now yes. it's not so much. Um, uh, I, I would see so much weight on your head, like it's so much, like almost right. like you were like in tar, like everything was just slowing you down, and and you know we're all, we're human, like you know we're human. So oh, yeah, yeah. To see you like be happy again and be excited to make these videos and stuff it feels it's good. It's it's like almost having old Jess back. Yeah, it this morning the video I worked on this morning it was late. I didn't finish it last night because, you know. And this morning I got up and I'm like, you know what? I don't even care if it's late. I'm gonna put the time and effort into this video that I have in my head. I'm gonna make it look the way I want it to look. And if it go, it goes up when it goes up. Like it doesn't have to be up right. at a certain time. It goes up today. As long as it goes up today, I'm happy. And I feel like years ago that was how I created videos. And I'm like, so I'm kind of back to that. I'm kind of back to more of the core of what I started the channel for. You know, let's educate. It doesn't all have to be, like, not that I'm not still going to make the cute, fun videos. I'm right. still going to make cute, fun videos, you know. But I also want to bring back more of the, you know, here's how to take care of a husky. And even today, like, one of the first comments I got on today's video within the first 15 minutes of it going up was somebody talking about, I've learned so much about how to take care of my dog from you, and I really appreciate this. And I'm like, there's the reminder, you know, that this is a lot of what people came to this channel for. You know, for the Fan Fridays, for the Q&A questions, for the help me with my dog problems. That's a lot of what we did back in the day, you know, it was a mix of both. So I really want to bring back the mix of both things. And I think, I think I'm on that track again. I think so. Will I be able to keep up doing two videos a week? I don't know, because I totally, I forgot to upload the vlog yesterday. Thought it was the other day. Thought it was a different day. And then realized that today was Wednesday. Um, but that'll all calm down when the book Nah, that'll never change. That's just you, Jess. That'll <laughs> no, never, that'll never change. That'll never change. Well, let's, uh, we've been going for about an hour here. I think we should wrap up Puppy Cast Buzz. All right, so before then, we wrap it up here, oh, yeah, oh, we did. We, I was going to say, and we did talk about the West Michigan Pet Expo. So uh, you live yes. in or around Michigan, mm-hmm. you know, come see us at the West Michigan Pet Expo. Come see us. It'll be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited, I'm excited too. I had so you much fun at Nova. You cannot bring your pets yeah, that's so you weird. You cannot bring your pets to this one. That's so weird, but it's yeah, going to make things so much easier. It will, and it'll be a great first experience for Eleanor to not have to not only be in a loud, different place meeting people, but she doesn't have to go through the meeting other dogs this time around. Right. It'll be a great first right. experience Because some people, some people don't know how to parent their dogs. Uh, so, you know, uh, that'll True. probably be <laughs> a, a good thing. So True. before before we get out of here, I have to thank the Patreon sponsors, the producers of this show that keep it going for us. Thank you so much. I'd like to give a shout out to Traveling Sheep 42, Steve Weston, My Life So Far, Nicholas Tafuri, B. Graham, Pamela Matthews, Melissa Fletcher, and Delaney. Thank you so much for all of your support. Uh, you're able to go there and see if you would like to be a Patreon subscriber. You're able to see the podcast first, at least a day or two before it goes live to everyone else. We also post random stuff uh, here and there. I try to post stuff on the weeks that we don't do, the weeks we don't do a podcast. I try to post something up there. I was posting Dan right. TV stuff up there and stuff like that just to keep it keep it going. But thank you so much. It really does help with the show. It pays for the Podbean. It pays for the server space. It pays for all that good stuff. So thank you so much for uh, keeping this alive. And what is it? Thank pa- you. 
patreon.com slash ccmousepodcast. Ah, is yes. The link? Mm-hmm. Yes, you'll see our little mouse faces that are that are there. Super cute, super cute. All right, Jess, I'm wrapping this up. That'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Oh, my gosh. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> no. no. We're no, good no, no, for no. your ears. No, a record scratch. <laughs> That'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Find the video version at youtube.com slash CC Mouse Podcast. Find our merch at CC Mouse Podcast. Shop. We'll see you next time. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. I know there was more in there, Jess. I know there was more in there, but, you know, simple Dan. Did you say we're good for your ears in the beginning or the end? In the beginning. In the oh, very okay. beginning, it's yes. It's been like three weeks since we've done this again. Oh after being like weeks since we've done it before, like, we're rusty. We're a little There's rusty. There's no excuse for me. There's no excuse for me. Oh, Don't my gosh. Don't blame us. Thank you, everybody. Don't we'll see you. I have to we'll show this because it's going to drive me insane. Can you see this? Oh my gosh, I think I had that ruler in the 80s. Right? It has my 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 maiden name. Kind of, you can't really see it, but it was written on the back of it. I think this was my ruler from when I was in grade school. It I've had it for forever and I still use it to measure stuff and you can barely read the numbers anymore. Oh my gosh, there's got to be a little I date knew on, you would appreciate on there. Yes, it just brings me right back to like 3rd or 4th grade, which would be like the late a like mid mid to like late 80s. It might be on the front by Garfield or like the feet down there. That's It says I can't read it. I think it says 1978. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I uh cuz Garfield was so popular. <laughs> Garfield was so popular back in the day. He was on Mugs. It says 1978. Little Oh, so it's as old as I am. It's as old as you. But are. yes, I had that exact <laughs> ruler growing up. Wow, what fly- I like, thought you'd appreciate that. I flashed back immediately to like sitting in the classroom where I was sitting at the teacher. Oh my gosh, wow, what it's crazy how <laughs> a visual can just bring back like a a, a buried memory. Oh my gosh, I, I was trying to measure because we're working on making dog leashes still, and this is one of the things we needed for it. And I was trying to measure it with this ruler, which is the dumbest thing. I need a different ruler to do it, but that's why it was sitting out here. And I picked this up and I saw the ruler, and I'm like, I gotta show this. I gotta show this to you guys because. I, one I knew, I knew you would appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, wow, instant instant flashback. That makes me happy. Yeah, be careful with that thing. Don't crack it. Don't break it. Don't do nothing. You might have to take some I, a pen and fill back in the inks of the of the missing uh, numbers. Right? Wow. All right. See you next time, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey, we did a thing. We did a thing.